The cervix is formed of two parts, ectocervix and endocervix. The ectocervix is lined by squamous epithelium, while the endocervix is lined by columnar epithelium. Most cervical tumors arise from squamous epithelium. Squamous cell carcinoma forms about 70% of all cervical cancers. Premalignant lesions are non-invading, I mean they affect the epithelium, but don't invade the basement membrane. When it involves the basal third of epithelium, it's known as CIN1. When it extends to the basal two-thirds, it becomes CIN2. But when lesion includes the whole thickness of epithelium, it's called CIN3. On the other hand, malignant disease invades the basement membrane. When the depth of invasion less than 3 mm, it is a stage 1A1. When the depth of invasion increases to become 3 mm or more, but less than 5 mm, it becomes a stage 1A2. As you see, stage 1A is microinvasive. I mean it can be diagnosed only by microscope. When the invasion becomes 5 mm or more, but the size of the tumor less than 2 cm, it becomes 1B1. When the tumor size becomes 2 cm or more, but still less than 4 cm, it becomes 1B2. While tumor size, which is 4 cm or more, is called the stage 1B3. As you see, stage 1, whether 1A or 1B, is confined to the cervix. When the tumor extends beyond the cervix and involves the upper two-thirds of the vagina, it becomes 2A. If tumor size less than 4 cm, 2A1. If tumor size 4 cm or more, 2A2. When it invades the barometrium, but not reaching the pelvic side wall, it becomes 2B. Further extension will lead to stage 3, I mean, extension to the lower third of the vagina, become stage 3A. Parametrial extension to lateral pelvic wall become stage 3B. This extension may affect the ureter, so hydronephrosis, hydroureter, or non-functioning kidney is considered 3B. Lymph node involvement is 3C. Pelvic lymph node metastasis 3C1, while paraaortic lymph node 3C2. Stage 4A involves spread to adjacent organs like bladder or rectum, while 4B involves spread to distant organs.